So what is the human being's escape from this situation? Solitary, nasty, brutish, and short. Is there a way out? Could here Jim or here Mary do anything about it? No. I mean, what could they? It's an individual. They could unite it. No. There's no such thing as uniting with others in the sense of you know, creating friendships and such things because we have defined how the human being, what the human being essentially is. But is there any other way but to, to commonly agree to a solution? No. And that's the trick. Now, no individual can find, no individual himself or herself can find a solution. The only escape from this is to cease being a lawless situation. But for that you need what? Someone to make and impose a law. And no one, not one individual can do that. Again, because what we described. So how, how do you escape? Very simply, all of them suddenly, well, suddenly, gradually doesn't matter, all of them have to agree to give up, to give up completely, abandon, renounce their power of pursuing their own will, their power of pursuing and making their own judgment, give it up. Give it up to whom? To the so-called Leviathan. Leviathan is the title of the book about which we're talking. You know, he wrote several books, but Leviathan is a, and this is his major writing in political philosophy, political thinking. Why Leviathan? Now the name Leviathan comes from the Bible. And it's in the Old Testament, it's this, um, I think in the Psalms, uh, this huge monster of the sea that God has created, this huge marvelous creature. In that sense, it's Leviathan. Now, what is the Leviathan here? It, it has this resonance of a huge thing that someone has created, but who creates this Leviathan? The individual human beings. They, by giving up completely, renouncing, Entering into a covenant with each other, all, each with each, all with all. They enter into a covenant by which, by into, in which all of them, at the same time, renounce the power of self-governance and convey it, give it to the Leviathan. They create what? This way, they create an artificial being. An artificial being in the sense that it's not there naturally, but it has been created. And that's, a, that's, that's basically society and government. Society is created, right? Commonwealth is the word he uses, and you know it. Commonwealth, even today we have the commonwealth, of, that is the you know, uh, bond, bond between the United Kingdom and its former colonies. Commonwealth, right? Now, this commonwealth or society, we had commonwealth in the first you know, initial colonies, commonwealth of Virginia, right? Commonwealth is the word for this social contract. A contract into which, again, who enters? Not them with the Leviathan, there's no, no such thing. The contract is between these in the poor, nasty, brutish individuals in the state of nature, each entering and together suddenly, abandon, uh, not abandoning, but giving up, delivering, delegating, in the sense of uh, not having the power of retracting it ever, right? So completely giving up and endowing the Leviathan with the power of running their lives, of governing. Why? But again, you're going to say, oh, this sounds like some dictatorship or whatever. No, no, no. Always have to remind, he spends a lot of time on this. This is why you should read those passages. If you need to read those. Uh, how uh, it will be also on the test. Um, this is why he emphasizes the horribility, the, the complete and utter insecurity. Think insecurity and think the age in which he lived and the civil war, right? Why did he think this was a state of nature? So the, the horrible, insecure, complete fear and danger, unceasing fear and danger with nothing, nothing, uh, no iPhones, uh, to uh, soothe, to protect you, but continues running through the wilderness in fear, basically. Um, that's the state of nature. So you always have to understand that the only alternative, the only alternative to that brut brutal and brutish state of nature 
is to enter into society. But entering into society that cannot, be made, uh, cannot be done half-heartedly. Entering into the society means that they no longer pursue their own desires with their own powers. They, because once you go back, that's falling back into what? State of nature. Once they lock themselves, once they, they, they each one individual takes back this power to no, 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 now I'm gonna enforce my desire for my, my desire, my pursuit of pleasure, which is what drives me by the way, right? And use power and power and power because that's the, the, the unceasing thing that we're doing, pursuing power, in order to satisfy the desire. Once one of these individuals does that, he does what? He falls out of the covenant because the covenant gives up. Everybody agrees to give up together this power of self-pursuit of power and desire and to give it to someone which, here's why, I, why I'm saying Leviathan, because this can be one person, ten, a thousand, doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter what this government, what this artificial person is, how many and so on. The, the problem, the idea is that this society makes a covenant and delivers the power of governance to another entity. Another entity, which is, what? So this entity, the Leviathan, this artificial monster, this artificial being, which is marvelous, right, actually, in that sense, monster is marvelous. Like, like a gigantic whale or octopus, I don't know. Uh, like Godzilla, I would say. Um, this, this artificial being is the government. Is, but it's not, notice here very importantly, that it is a product of them giving up their power of governance. So the contract is between these, not with the Leviathan. It's between the individuals, the Leviathan is produced by that. But why is it? In order to maintain life, in order to maintain civilization, in order to maintain, to allow for law, for order. The reason why they give up this power is in order to escape war. Now understand and think about where he comes from. Maybe he was yearning, right, in the time of civil war and continued conflict and insecurity and bloodshed, just like this it is, like Machiavelli for order. Wasn't Machiavelli yearning for a prince to make order and unify the Italian peninsula, even if that makes what means what? Take absolute power. That was that's what that's what Machiavelli was pursuing in in, in many ways, suggesting to, to, to the Medici family. Do that. Because he wanted stability. Wanted someone to defeat Fortuna. So here, you have the Leviathan. So what binds the Leviathan? Right? What is his test? Well, first of all, he has all the power to make law, to put order. So what becomes the source of order? Simply the will of the Leviathan. But is there a limit? Yeah, the only limit to the will of the Leviathan, remember, he's, or they, right? are constructed with a very clear purpose, to, to make law, to create order, to create a society which is only possible through law. If there is no such power with absolute, no such uh, government with absolute source of power to make law, sovereign, right, sovereign meaning exclusive power, and we'll see this is very much like the modern state. Yes, the one you live in. Because the modern state has sovereign power. Meaning that nobody else can, t can have a say, right? So, uh, if this Leviathan doesn't have absolute power, then there is no order. Because the, the old intrinsic drives towards pursuit of power and self-satisfaction and desire are going to lead to what? War, 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 war. And guess what? He saw that in the civilized England in which he lived, the mo one of the most civilized countries in the world at that point. He saw that, that when this breaks down, well, you have war. So that's the Leviathan. This is the Leviathan. So what binds the Leviathan? Nothing. What is, so this ruler, what, uh, what will it mean to be a good ruler or a bad ruler? Well, somewhat similar to Machiavelli, there is no good ruler or bad ruler. As long as he provides the most essential thing, which is what? Security. Security for the whole, not for the one individual. He can condemn someone to death, and again, like he doesn't mean that it's one guy. It can be a whole political system with judiciary and this and that. 
right? But unless this Leviathan, you know, uh, he might condemn someone to death or whatever, but the point is, the major task is to allow for life to exist. Life that is not more, in that sense life. So the, the, the Leviathan is actually an absolute ruler. An absolute ruler that, remember, could not exist, for example, for Aquinas or for Novastic. Because the ruler was just a guy, right? Or woman, of course, in charge of the city, but he was no god. Yeah. He was part of, he was just an individual, just like others, and he has his own tasks, and he has to make his own choices, and depends where he will end up. He is not God. Right? But not here anymore. There is no God. There is no God. There is no absolute, there is no order. It's only chaos. It's only chaos. This is why we need a Leviathan. So, again, what binds this Leviathan? Nothing but one thing. He can, he or it can pass any laws, govern in any way, shape, or form, as long as it provides for the most essential right or duty, or right or, or liberty or uh, drive of each individual human being, which is what self-preservation. So when it will arbitrarily kill everyone, then the whole purpose is defeated. Because the purpose was to have what? Order. To have not death. <laughs> to have a state that is not solitary, nasty, brutish, and short. To have a state that is not a war of one against all, of one against the other, unceasingly looking for power, and so on. That is the Leviathan from Hobbes. And uh, if you want to, to ponder this, then just think of the situation in some of the parts of the world. If, if, if England in the, during this time of civil war seems so remote, think of Iraq, think of Afghanistan, think of uh, Libya. After Gaddafi, think of Syria or whatever. Again, not as a, I'm not advocating, of course. I'm just presenting the ideas, but I'm trying to help you see the where he comes from. And as we'll see later, this idea of a sovereign, an absolute sovereign, which was impossible in the Middle Ages because the sovereign was never God, this idea of an absolute sovereign would be very clearly reflected in the modern reality of the sovereign, modern sovereign, quote unquote, nation state, of the modern sovereign centralized state. And there are very discussions that, you know, when we talk about international relations, about the right to intervene in a state, there's a long standing debate if one state can intervene into another state because of this principle of sovereignty. And then we say, how about genocide? And there's a debate. But the idea of sovereignty and the divine. Thank you.